We've now seen that regardless of how the tax law is written, a per unit tax results in a tax wedge that's the size of that per unit tax to the left of the equilibrium causing a reduction in output and a difference between the price that consumers pay and the price that sellers receive. Now the way that we've drawn this picture, it seems like prices for consumers go up by about as much as prices fall for sellers. So it looks like the burden of that per unit tax is split about equally between consumers and firms. But that's only because of the way we've drawn the supply and demand curves in this graph. We've drawn them with similar elasticities at this original equilibrium. But we know that, for example, in the long run, if we have a competitive industry with identical firms, supply curves aren't going to slow up, slope up like this. This might be a short-run supply curve or a supply curve that's a long-run supply curve in an industry with firms that aren't identical. But if firms were identical, we would have a long-run supply curve that's perfectly elastic. So a supply curve would look like this. And the industry would produce that much at this price. When we now fit that tax wedge into this picture, we get something like this, where consumer prices increase by the entire amount of the per unit tax. So in this case, the entire burden of the tax is passed on to consumers, because firms make zero profit before and they're going to make zero profit after. So the entire burden of the tax is actually passed on to the consumers. There's a more general lesson that emerges from thinking about elasticities in taxes. And we see it in this picture. Taxes are going to be passed on to that side of the market that is relatively more inelastic. So the relatively more inelastic portion of the market is going to bear a disproportionate burden of a tax. You can, for example, draw a case where you have a steep demand curve and a shallow supply curve. A case similar to this in some ways, and we see if we put that tax wedge in, the consumer prices are going to go up by a lot, but the seller's prices are going to fall by a little. Or you could draw another one with the opposite, a relatively steep supply curve and a relatively shallow demand curve. In that case, we start at this price. If we put the tax wedge in, the seller's price goes down by a lot, but the consumer price doesn't go up by very much at all. So the burden of the tax is going to be disproportionately borne by the side of the market that's relatively more inelastic. And that should make sense. It's easier to pass the burden of a tax to the side of the market that isn't responsive to price changes. So the less responsive a side of the market is to price changes, the more of the burden of the tax that side of the market will bear. So that's one lesson about elasticities and tax policy. But elasticities also have to do with other aspects of tax policy. They have to do with how much revenue we can raise from the tax and how much of a deadweight loss the tax will produce. So let's start with a deadweight loss. First, let's find the deadweight loss in this picture. Consumers initially made a surplus above their price up to the demand curve. When the price goes up, their surplus shrinks to that smaller triangle and the producer surplus similarly shrinks from that larger triangle to the smaller triangle when the price for sellers falls. So that means that consumers and sellers are losing surplus, that's this rectangle, plus this triangle over here. Now that triangle has to be deadweight loss because no one is going to get this surplus that consumers and producers used to get because these goods are no longer being produced. So we get a deadweight loss in here, a deadweight loss on the consumer side. That's exactly equal to the deadweight loss we first identified when we introduced the concept of deadweight loss in the consumer model. We got exactly this triangle from the increase in prices that results from a tax on the consumer side. But now we have an additional deadweight loss on the producer side as well. So that'll be our deadweight loss for sure. Now what about this rectangle? 
Well, remember, remember that the difference between the consumer and the seller price is the per unit tax. So the per unit tax times how much output is being produced, that's equal to tax revenue. So this box here is equal to tax revenue. And tax revenue is just a transfer from some people to other people. So it's not a deadweight loss. So the deadweight loss will then simply be that triangle. So now let's see how that relates to elasticities. And let's just draw two extreme cases. Let's draw one case where we have a relatively steep demand curve and a relatively steep supply curve. So very inelastic demand and supply curves. And then another case where we have relatively elastic demand and supply curves. So if we now introduce a per unit tax of the same size into the two pictures, maybe of this size, we're going to have to introduce them at very different points relative to the original equilibrium. So the same size, we're going to see consumer prices increase, seller's price decrease in both cases. But in this case we see a large reduction in output. And in this case we see a small reduction in output. As a result the deadweight loss triangle here is going to be very small. So you're going to get this very small deadweight loss triangle but we're going to get a very large deadweight loss triangle over here. Well, that makes sense. The deadweight loss comes from the reduction in output that happens as a result of the tax. And that reduction in output is going to be large if consumers and firms are relatively price elastic. And it's going to be small if they're relatively price inelastic. We also see that the total rev uh, the tax revenue box is large here, but it's small here. So here the government gets to like collect a lot of tax revenue. Here it doesn't collect very much tax revenue because output fell by so much. And that should make sense too. If consumers and producers are relatively price elastic, they're going to respond a lot to the, to the tax increase. And so there's going to be much less to tax. And so tax revenue is going to be lower. So tax revenue is going to be larger the more inelastic demand and supply and deadweight loss is going to be smaller the more inelastic demand and supply.